Hi everybody, today I'm going to show you a potion sorter. So this machine here is able to distinguish between certain potions depending on the modifiers you can add. So we could for example use this to separate water bottles and normal potions. So if I put in the normal potion, it just goes through the system and will be put into this chest here. But if we put in the water bottle, then it will be put into this chest here, as you can see. It's important that the potion sorter is only fed by potions. Here's how you can get potions out of a mixed lot of items. So first we want to sort out the stackable items. We could use this setup here. So you can see if I put in stackable items, we we'll put in this chest. And if I put in non-stackables, like a helmet or potions, they will be put into this chest here. So we use that the comparator reads out single strength 3 if there's a non-stackable item in the hopper, uh, which would disable the storage here. Um, which yeah, enables the hopper to suck out the items out of the bottom, out of the, out of the top hopper, and then it will be put into this chest here. And then we need to further sort out the other potions out of the other non-stackables. So we could use this setup here. So if we put in a helmet, it would be put into this chest, and if we put in a potion, it would be put. Yeah, there was a trap chest. Uh, we we'll put it into this uh, chest here. Let's do it once more. So you can see it. Uh, um, the potions gets put into the brewing stand by the dropper and then put into the chest here. Um, so this is actually quite simple. Only potions could be put into a brewing stand. Obviously, if you try to do it with other other non-stackable item, then it just doesn't work. The item remains in a dropper. And at the bottom here, as you can see, the hopper is disabled for a moment, um, which just gives the dropper enough time to put or try to put the item into the brewing stand. And once... Um, it's no longer power to hopper below, it would suck out the remaining items like the helmet. So let's put into this chest here. So in order to explain what the big machine here does, um, I just want to yeah, do a manual setup. I think it's easier to show. Um, so here's how we can distinguish further between potions. So here we have a normal brewing stand with some blaze powder in it. And we try to yeah, brew an awkward potion with the nether ward. So if you put in the night vision potion or any other potion, nothing happens. But if I put in the water bottle, then the whole brewing stand starts brewing. Um, an observer or something else couldn't detect it. So if you look at F the F3 menu, um, the block state of the brewing stand only differs if it has bottles in it or not. So if I put in a bottle, as you can see, then let me get a red cell lamp. Then you can see the brewing stand um, would yeah, be detected, or the change of the brewing stand would be detected by the observer. Uh, you could also detect the change uh, if you put in a bottle yeah, by taking comparator output, but that actually doesn't help a lot because you get an output whether you put in a bottle or a water bottle or another potion. So this is, yeah, you can't really use any observer or so to detect the change in that. But the only change is you get if you have a potion that can be brewed into something, then the brewing stand would start, which requires uh, a blaze powder charge. So. It takes a 20th of a blaze powder to brew a potion, and every time you abort it, it will require more blaze powder. So the only way we can detect if there's a bottle put into the brewing stand that um, yeah, requires or starts the brewing process is to measure the amount of blaze powder we have in it. So in case there's just one um, bar left, then we would actually use up a blaze powder. And yeah, obviously we can detect it because here we have another hopper that tries to put in uh, blaze powder into the yeah, blaze powder slot. And if it yeah, succeeds with putting in um, the blaze powder, then we can actually detect it just by doing a comparator output. So this would turn off because there's no blaze, blaze powder left. And then we just power the dropper to put, into, put in a new blaze powder into it. There's always one blaze powder left in the hopper. Okay, now let's try to brew this again. Okay, there's one, le uh, one left. And as you can see, now we got the output here that uh, torch turned on. And we basically detect that we have a potion that would start brewing. Okay, so now we use this behavior here with this uh, big setup. It's just automated. Um, so if we put in the normal potion and just go through the system, really nothing happens. But if you put in the water bottle, then here we take an output 
which locks this hopper here. So basically when the hopper is empty, then we lock the bottom hopper here, um, which causes the um, yeah, hopper to transfer the item into this dropper there and further into this chest. So all the water bottles would go into this chest. But the problem is now um, that the, yeah, the blaze powder bar is completely filled up again. So in order to get it into a state where we could actually take that a blaze powder is used, uh, when we put in the next bottle, we have to actually <laughs> uh, circle uh, uh, water bottles through the system 19 times to use up all the blaze powder, which is left in the bar. And that's what we do here. We also start this uh, little timer. There's 19 items in it. Um, so we start this, then there's a comparator clock running here. And we cycle uh, water bottles through the system again. Um, so there's also this redstone block is extended, blocking this hopper here. And then we have this loop here. So the hopper here sucks out the items out of the brewing stand, puts it into this um, dropper, and then it just cycles through 19 times. Okay, now let's actually do that so you can see the system in action. Okay, so the redstone block blocks it. And here we just cycle through brewing stand using up all the blaze powder charges until there's just one left. Okay, there we go. Now we could use the system again. Uh, we also block this uh, setup here. Um, so we can't uh, put new potions into the system while um, yeah, the reset is done. So let me actually get the potions back. So let's put in a water bottle and then the other potions, as you can see, uh, this dropper here, this, um, yeah, hop, uh, this comparator clock is blocked as long um, as the bottom system is running. Then the block here is rejected again, so we get a redstone dot, which powers this sticky piston again, and then the next potion is put into the system. Okay, so this is, yeah. Not that great, I mean, it's kind of slow, requires resources, and you can't even sort all the potions because you can only uh, sort potions that can be brewed, or can be further brewed uh, if it has a modifier that would work. So maybe over here can you can see the benefits and flaws of the system. Here put in a chest uh, which has all the potions that a witch could drop. So potions of swiftness, water breathing, healing, and fire resistance. So let's actually put those into the system. And yeah, here you can see the flaw of the system. At the bottom, we would get the water briefing and fire resistance potions. Um, yeah, both potions can't be distinguished uh, since they have the same modifiers. You can only use redstone dust on them um, in order to get extended potions. But we use the fact that the swiftness potions and the health potions um, could be brewed into a tier 2 potion with glowstone dust. So now here as you can see in this hopper this time I have a glowstone dust and all the potions uh, that react to the glowstone dust would be further sent to the, the second system here where we have a redstone dust in it. Okay so the swiftness potion can also be brewed into an extended uh, duration potion but the, um, the healing potion can't. So here at the bottom we get all the healing potions and here we would get all the swiftness potions. And here we have the water breathing and fire resistance potions. Okay, so the system has finished. It takes always quite a while to reset all the brewing stands uh, to the state where there's only one um, blaze powder use left. Um, but now we got all the potions sorted. Okay, so you could also use the system, for example, to distinguish between normal potions and lingering potions or yeah, normal potions, splash potions and lingering potions and so on, that would also be possible. So all in all, this potion sorter is more of a curiosity because it has so many downsides, um, so it requires resources. Every time you detect something, you have to put it in a new blaze powder. This dropper here is the storage, but you could also add hopper and chests and so on to make it bigger. Um, yeah, then it's quite slow and you're limited by the modifiers that can be put onto the potions. So not all potions can be separated. And it's, yeah, the machine was mostly more of a challenge since it's possible they made it. 
Um, but there was actually one case where I would have needed such a system back in 1.9. I made a 8k looting tree witch farm. Um, so I used splash potions of farming to kill witches. And because of the setup that I used, they dropped fire resistance potions and health potions. Fire resistance because they received some fire damage, uh, which was necessary because of uh, some technicalities. Anyway, I could have used those health potions um, to easily make the splash potions of farming, just by adding two ingredients. But I couldn't separate them from the fire resistance potions. So I could sort out all the stackables, and then I was, uh, had the, yeah, the non-stackable potions left, but I couldn't distinguish between them. And if I had the system back then, I would probably have used it in a witch farm. But the issue was in 1.9, there was uh, no blaze powder slot, so I couldn't use the setup uh, uh, where I detect the usage of the blaze powder. So in case you're interested in building this machine, I will provide a world download as always. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.